talk about the voltage controlled filter. This is a 24 decibel per octave Moog ladder filter. So it sounds good, like you might expect. Now you access it uh, by switching the brass section preset to variable. Now we have the variable filter. And we just hear the brass sawtooth without any filtering because we don't have the filter set to make a filter sound. But we're going to fix that. That's the point of this demonstration. Okay, here we go. Strange articulation. Okay, so here's what the filter sounds like. Unlike up here, when the filter's at zero, we don't hear any filter sound because the filter slope is so steep that all that the fundamental is gone. Okay, let's have a listen to the emphasis. We'll put it at 25 percent. 50 percent. 75% or just below self-oscillation because this one does do self-oscillation. There isn't a huge spread of filter in here, and that might be a calibration thing, but. Now, self-oscillation. Wow, let's turn that down a little bit. Okay, so. Where up here, you're thinking, gosh, I wish there was an envelope to control that frequency cutoff point. Down here, we have an envelope to control the frequency cutoff point. So uh, in the style of Moog, the envelope is called contour. So to get it to work, we need to turn the contour amount up. Of course, we don't hear anything because we don't have a contour over here. But we can start to make one. Look, it's paraphonic. The, these notes are controlling this filter contour or fi filter envelope. So any notes we play after this are going to be lost in the filter. This is the very definition of paraphonic. But as long as you play everything at the same time, you won't have that problem. And this is where your brass section becomes your sort of typical Moog sounding synthesizer. When you have the sustain up, you don't get the closing of the filter really. You can cut off the final decay of this envelope so that every time you play it, it stops playing the moment you stop playing. So irrespective of what the articulator is set to, switching, switching this off means the filter goes away when you stop playing. Of course, if this were on. I'm not sure what that's for. Maybe I'm not thinking about it well enough, but it does help when you're playing the organ, which we could do. Uh, it gives you sort of that more of an organ sound. 
That doesn't sound like an organ. And this is the point where your organ basically can become your synthesizer. You can mix it with the sawtooth of the brass. So you have much more, and once you get this organ with its various square, t uh, square waves and the sawtooth of the brass working together and going through the filter, or just going through the filter alone, you have more of a synthesizer sort of sound. So if you want like a really big bass sound, and this is how I did the bass sound in the theme to this demo, uh, I basically sort of mixed the organ and the brass. I took out all of the high end of the organ, so we just have this big, huge square wave with the brass sawtooth. <laughs> So you can get a really nice low end with this doing that. Um, so there is the possibility for bass in here too. So it's really a weird architecture, but they uh, have really covered a lot of the bases with it to give you approximations of these different types of synth sounds along with these approximations of uh, traditional instruments. And uh, so there's a lot more to it. Some of the stuff you kind of have to work for, but uh, there's a lot of good stuff in here. By holding the notes here and having it in the mode that it's in, I can uh, do that where new notes do not cause the filter to open back up. But yes, so that is the sound of the voltage-controlled filter found in the Moog Opus 3 to be used by brass and organ. Or, or organ. Brass and organ, or brass or organ, either way. Anyway, that is the Moog filter that exists in the Opus 3. Oh. 